so today we get to look at some graphs and we get to start moving those graphs. So we're going to play around with Desmos a little bit. Or actually you guys are going to play around with Desmos a little bit. So 1.6 is transformations of functions. And transformations is just moving things around. So you're going to take a parent function, so a nice little plain easy function. Then how do you move it up? How do you move it down? How do you move it left? How do you move it right? How do you make it skinnier? How do you make it wider? All of those kind of good things. So a um, couple ones that we need to play around with. Uh, if we have like y equals x squared. You guys know what that graph looks like, right? Nice little parabola going up. So after we kind of get through the notes and when you guys go to get to the assignment, so on Desmos, before you guys get started too much, um, I want you guys to be able to go through and look at what happens if you do like y equals x plus, um, I don't know, what do I want to put in for the number a? We'll do a squared. So in other words, when you mess around with A, so put in there, you know, negative 2 and then put in a positive 2 and sit there and see if you guys can figure out what happens if you leave everything in the parentheses and you square it, what happens when you change that number. Does that make sense? It's either going to shift it left, it's going to shift it right, that type of thing. Um, and then you're going to put in like Y equals X squared plus A. So on this one, that A isn't inside the parentheses. So then you're going to figure out if it moves it left, it moves it right, if it moves it up, or it's going to move it down. And I know we've done these a little bit in Algebra 2 last year when we had you guys try to play around with them to see how they switched. And then the other one is like Y equals, we're going to go like AX squared. So, you know, uh, make A positive and negative, um, and then make it, you know, where it's greater than 1. Ooh. Ooh. And then also do one like where it's... Whatever. So... What did we say? We wanted to try where we had, um, there you go, sorry about that. I have to pair the iPad with the computer and then it goes through a website and I think we're having some technology issues, some internet issues, so you guys should be able to see this one. Um, so we said we were going to put in x squared, right? so you guys are going to put in that one, right? and then you guys are going to put in some x like plus a, right? Then you want to have that squared, right? And you can play around with that one. Um, x oh, plus a, and then oh, putting numbers out front. So if you had a x plus, well, we don't even need that one. We'll just do it this way. Right? So you're going to put positive, negatives, um, do numbers that are greater than one, and then like fractions, ones that are less than one. So put in a half or two thirds or something along that lines. Uh, oh, and then if we had a, whoops, you don't need that one. Um, if we had x squared, and then plus a or minus a, right? So this one is just called your parent function because that's just the nice easy one. Okay. Um, on this one you're keeping something in the parentheses and you're doing the positives or negatives on that with it being inside the parentheses to see how that moves a, a function. Um, the number out front, right, play around with that. 
positive negatives, whole numbers and fractions less than one, put those in there. And then also having it where you have your x squared, but then you have the number not in the parentheses. Probably move that one up here, right? Um, where it's not in the parentheses and see how that moves the function around. Then you guys will be able to come up with a, because once doing it with the quadratic is probably like the easiest to see the shifts and the changes, but it works for all families of functions. So then when we get to looking at absolute values, so we know that absolute values are a V shape, right? Well, those absolute value signs, I mean, you almost kind of think of them as like the parentheses and that X squared. So if you have absolute value and you have a plus or minus inside the absolute value, it's going to shift that graph just like it does for the quadratic. If you have that absolute value and then you get a number outside of it, it's exactly the same shift as what it is for the quadratic. So once we get a good little handle on how it shifts and moves quadratics, then we can do it with any family of functions.